Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for joining me. My name is Lemuel. Tonight is our 22nd episode of Unpacking. Unpacking is where we break down, understand, unpack thoughts, concepts, ideas, and any other thing that may interest me, because I think if it interests me, it probably will interest a few more people like me. And tonight, we have a fantastic show lined up for you. I have a new friend that actually I met through the pandemic. It's going to be fantastic. Just a conversation in the way um, we met We met through uh, this incredible software that I'm using right now and the community that is built around it. So we'll talk about that later. But we are going to be discussing tonight. We're going to be unpacking, uh, leveraging in line of uh, online presence and how to leverage the online presence. My guest tonight has an incredible story about just the ups and downs of uh, internet and how personalities and the, the, the things that he shares currently, his understanding, his know-how, all the things that is making him one of the more sought out people now on the web. Uh, but before that, I want you guys to tag somebody, invite somebody on the show, uh, maybe create a watch party. If you're interested in how the internet can be used, to leverage your presence, tonight is the night for you. Get back to me in 30 seconds. Good evening again. This is Lemuel, your host for Unpacking. This is episode 22, 22, 22. And I have tonight a good friend of mine. I call him my big brother now. Uh, he's a little older than myself, although he, he's quite uh, a handsome young lad. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have, to my honor, the one and only Sean Doc right here. From Hawaii. Welcome, bro. Can you hear me? How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Yeah, I glad can hear you. to glad to have you here with me, man. I appreciate your time. I know what time is it in Hawaii right now? It is two almost two ten PM in the PM. <laughs> Woo. Thank you again for joining me. It is 8 to 809 here in the East Coast, New York City. I'm so glad to have you here with me. Uh, normally, this show is catered to like conversations concerning injustice or abuse or all those kind of social, um, social issues or social conditions that uh, we face as a people. Uh, but I wanted to swing a little bit in this fall season on just other things that interest me and other things that I'm sure interest people. And one of them is actually uh, the power of social media and the power of having an online presence. And there is one person that I feel like is really kind of reigning in this, this, uh, this season of their lives into applying, um, applying what they know to actually providing or fulfilling a need and thus creating really a strong presence online. And that is you, my friend. Can you share us a little bit about yourself, Doc? Yeah, so I'm a kind of regular cat, but I just like, I don't know, I like strange things. Like I fell in love with tech as a kid. Um, I was kind of lucky that um, my dad got me a computer when I was mad young. Uh, just, I don't know, he, he just had this whim, because, you know, back in the day, he talk about how computers are going to be the future, right? So he had this whim, like, well, if that's going to be the future, I can, like, you know, force him to ball or, you know, get him to do the trades and do the stuff that we've been doing, or maybe he can try this computer stuff, so it's going to be different, you know? And it only started because somebody gave him one of them old-school Snoopy calendars that they printed out 
You know, they take all the little X's and they would like tape them on a piece of paper and you get this giant Snoopy calendar. And that was like the thing to pass around in the mid 70s. Right. So then Pops was like, oh, this computer stuff is cool. And I was like, really, it's just a Snoopy calendar. But I got in the tech from that. And then I got into music, of course, like I was on my way to trying to be a rap star. And mm. in the process of recording and like, you know, trying to do sequencing and stuff, because, you know, electronic music had just come out. I was in love with craft work. I was in love with, you know, um, uh, what's, what's the dude's name? Thomas Dolby, uh, Blinding Me With Science, you know, like these cats that was killing the, the sort of electronic music game, David Bowie, all of that. I was like, yo, I want to do that. And so right about the time I got the computer where I could start to do music, uh, hip hop just exploded at that exact moment, right? <laughs> and I remember a band called Whistle and I was like, yo, they did a bunch of their stuff with like electronic music. So literally what dug me deep into it was trying to be a, a hip hop star uh, that didn't pan out. But I already had all these computer skills. So I'm like, well, I got to get my money back for all I dumped into the to the rap game. And uh, yeah, I became a nerd. <laughs> well, I know <laughs> I, one of the things that you often have been telling us, because uh, for those of you that do not know, um doc and i we well it's his group but i am part of his ecamm masters group and uh, one of the things that he often say is that look guys i kind of fell out from the game i was in the mix when all of these things started popping started just blowing up and something just swayed me to a different tune and i left it and now i'm back so can you tell a little bit of that the beginning and yeah, cool. the journey of you falling out of there and then and now you come back. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Like again, because I was a nerd um, in the first boom, like the original tech boom, I got offers for Adobe and Macromedia. They were separate at that time. Um, and I went to the Bay. I checked out the spots. Hey, what's up, Jay? I, I went to the Bay. I checked out the spots. I, I went to, it's funny. Had, had I, had I gone to the Bay and stayed in the Bay, I still would have became friends with my boy John. You just posted up on screen because he. <laughs> Who is that guy? Right, that's my kind of like my neighbor, but literally one of my super good friends. You know, but All we right. happen to live in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, we became close friends, and it's funny. Like, had I taken those jobs right there, I probably still would have met him because he was doing stuff with uh, San Francisco Bay TV back then and working with like Mike Rowe. And another good friend of ours, Malou. So we have Mike like, Rowe as in Mike Rowe as in Dirty Jobs. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So go ahead. Yeah, it's just it's kind of crazy. It's it's funny to me that like I didn't take that position because I was so in love with Hawaii and not and wanting to leave. But honestly, hindsight being twenty twenty, I was scared. I ain't gonna lie. At the time, I would never told anybody that, but now I know better. Um, but you know. Right after I didn't take the job, like swear a year later, the tech boom blew up and then they reinvented themselves and they mm -hmm. came back with tech. I know, you know, and then so I just kept going. And then, um, you know, I was early adopter in YouTube. I was creating videos or whatever. But, you know, this is the thing that gets everybody in trouble. At that time, YouTube was just YouTube. There was no getting paid for it or anything like that. It wasn't even about getting notoriety. There was even no such thing as viral. Right. Um, <laughs> yes, June, you don't yes. have to feel like you don't have to. Be, you have to behave, bro. <laughs> We're just friends no. here. Don't listen to my little brother. He's dangerous. <laughs> so at that time, like, again, I was just posting stuff, but like, I didn't think about the money or whatever to get put into it or whatever. And again, listening to somebody who I pretty much listen to a lot, except for what I didn't want to listen to, but it's kind of an easy excuse. My dad was like, he used to tell me and my brother, June, why you guys waste all your time on the internet? What are you going to do? You're not making any money doing that. You know, go do this, go do that, go make some money. So listening to my dad, I stopped doing it. It wasn't just him. It was a bunch of other factors as well. But uh, then all of a sudden I, I, I see a thing on my page. And there's a new post. I see my dad posting stuff to YouTube. And I was like, <laughs> wait a minute. Yo, pops, how you got a YouTube channel? It's like, oh, I want to post my videos there. I'm like, oh. So right when YouTube decided they was going to start paying fools, 
<laughs> well, what year was that, Doc? Uh, 2009. No. Partner program came out in 2014. But prior to that, I think they were just doing random, like random access. Ad share was like 2009, 2010. But it was just funny. Like in his late 60s, my dad was posting these videos of like Hawaii scenery and stuff to YouTube and trying to get it all together. And I was like, oh, this guy is funny. But again, you know, just kind of toe dipping, toe dipping, was never committed. And so something that you find out, and we kind of reiterated today on a video that we watched independently, but I know we both watched it. It's not about the the, the output, yo. It's about the input. Everyone's mm -hmm. always so focused on the output, right? And that was me, right? Like, I'm putting this stuff. I'm doing this thing. And, uh, when am I going to get my subscribers? Or when am I going to get my money? When am I going to get my this? When am I going to get my that? And I, that's not that's not how it works, bro. No matter how much you think you can do it that way, it doesn't work that way. So you got to just put in, put in, put in, put in. And all of a sudden, a tiny little bill would be like, you ready? And then the output starts coming. Yeah. Well, well yeah, I know. I know you and I got involved with this software around probably the same time, the beginning of the pandemic. And you really yeah. have taken this Ridiculous. thing, just swung it really on the high note and just rode it like a horse it, that it is. And I know, um, I know in the past month or so, you have gained over a thousand followers. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, just yes. on your YouTube yes. page. Money right there, <laughs> not sponsored, but yeah, uh, two buddy helps, man. It's it's a it's one of those things. I, and I, and I, again, when I first saw it, like when it first came out, I'm like I don't need these kind of shortcuts. I mean, shortcuts, shortcuts don't work, blah blah. It's not a shortcut, but it's a tool. <laughs> you know what I mean? But this is what and I want to really bring you here because I I know there's a lot of people that are looking at the internet and they're looking at like online personalities and they're wondering where do I fit in, but. I mean, what are you telling these people, maybe like even myself, where you know that there are people that are making massive amounts of money on YouTube, um, and what are you trying to provide in that experience, or maybe not experience, but maybe in that sphere of influence, how can you begin to leverage uh, your personality in light of just you know, not even money yet, but influence, leadership, community connections? All these other things that once you begin to have this presence, it just begins to flow in a certain way. All right. I'm going to flip the script on you real quick before I answer that question. What made you wake up one day and had the, the cojones to be like, you know what? I'm going to be a minister. I'm going to tell other people the good word when they can just read it by themselves. We'll put you on that. Well, actually, my dad was a, a pastor. So I grew up in a pastoral home and then at 20 years old, at 20 years old, he comes to me. It's hard to get the answer out of you. But this is, this is the answer, right? Because what happened is, what, what happened was um, my dad comes up to me and well, before then I had a dream the night before and my dad, who was 44 at that time, he comes to me and says, in my dream, son, I'm getting old. I want you to pastor because he was a pastor. And I woke up and that afternoon, my dad actually said the very same thing. Son, I'm getting old. I want you to pastor. And I was like, hey, that was in my dream. So that pretty much gave me the impetus to kind of push on forward when he did assign me and ordain me as a pastor of the church that I'm pastoring now. So that's how I got to that place. But I didn't come to it on my own, if that's what you're asking. No, I, the reason why I was asking is because for the most part, Two things that's messed up, like, okay, social media has given us, all right, I, I, I'm not going to bash social media at all because there's just too much victim mentality in that language. However, it has created a culture of instant gratification, okay? Yeah. People want to see when you post something, they want to see an instant response. So if I post a picture, say, you know, uh, you know, me and my brother, we go out, we're like flying drones or whatever. And I take a dope shot at diamond head from like, you know, 450 feet. You know, you can see the crest. I'm like right at the crest. I see the hiker going, right? I post it. And whether you believe you believe it or not, you kind of sit there like a Pavlov dog waiting to see how fast you can get 50 people to be like, yo, dog, that's sick. Right. But at the end of the day, 
I took that picture for me. I technically don't need that validation. Mm. I am comfortable enough in my stuff that I don't need that validation. And if only two people clicked it and understood what it was, I'm cool with that. If nobody clicked it and understood what it was, I'm also cool with that. But unfortunately, people have been tied their self value to amount of likes and amount of clicks. And that's a scary spot. That's the scary point of social media. But that's not social media's fault, though. Everybody wants to blame it. Social media makes it so that you always want to be validated by other people. No, nah, you did that. Mm. Okay, you can back up and say, okay, my parents did that. But at some point after like 16, you had a chance to look your parents in the face and be like, yo, I don't accept the things you fit to say about me. I don't accept the things that you're telling me. I don't feel that's right. So I'm going to develop my own thing from about that point. Everything after about 16, I'm sorry, I'm going to blame you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I got, I, I, here's a prime example. I got a buddy of mine who I know for a fact is a way better, you know, camera person or video person or all of the above. Right. But he's like, Oh, you know, well, I'm shy. And you know, I don't have that you know, thing, whatever. There's no such thing as shy, bro. Shy is 118% a social construct. Some languages don't even have the word. Somebody told you when you were a child that you were shy and you listened and it stuck. And more and more people told you and it got reinforced. It got reinforced. It got reinforced. It is stuck. There is no thing. I, don't, I, I could be wrong. I had to double check it, but I'm about to just trust myself. I don't think shy is in a DSM five, bro. I don't think it is a clinical disposition. I don't, I could be wrong again. I don't have a DSM five to look it up, but if somebody told you at some point that you're shy and then now you're like, Oh, I can't go on the internet. I'm sad. What's a DSM five doc. Some of us don't know what that is. Uh, I'm going to give you the exact words because <laughs> you should, I mean, if I'm going to bring it up, you should know the exact words. Um, <laughs> But it's basically a diagnostic manual okay. of, uh, of uh, clinical disorders from the American Psychiatry Association. So it means something. Diagnostic and statist statistical manual of uh, mental something disorders. There you go. DSM-5. Okay. DSM. That's <clears throat> all right. So go ahead. No. So I, at, at some point, like, when you really self-reflect, when you really dig into yourself, and unfortunately for most of us, mm. I didn't gain this practice until like 40. And I was like, dang, I wish I had to listen to all the people that were telling me this mess in my 20s, but you hard-headed and you cock diesel and you, you know, you're you're like bad. Like you, nobody can tell me what to do. I know what's cracking, right? did did not absorb me that knowledge as you get older you start to reflect you start to reflect on your mistakes or you know write your little journals and look at what you did a year ago that you was afraid of and look at it now and go i can't believe i was afraid of that like all of these practices helped me the self-reflection helped me realize like yo i didn't need a lot of the stuff i thought i needed you know what i mean and then when you get rid of that you can get down to brass tacks and you can do work so for the most part most people are afraid because they're either a excuse me, worried about the output, like how many followers, how much money, like how much time is this going to take, whatever, that's all output. They're not really willing to put in the input, like what it takes to get there. You cannot walk into a dojo and walk out with a black belt. It is impossible in every martial art, okay? You got to go in completely humble, white belt, yes, sensei, put in that work, the repetition, the repetition, the repetition, the repetition, and then bam, you know what I mean? So we're talking not, about right now, you're, you're from what I'm hearing from you, you're really talking about kind of being, being present to create the presence. Like right. a lot of people are, are thinking, okay, I'm going to create this persona and I'm going to go there with the mindset of creating uh, an idea of who I am as opposed to really expressing who you are and working from that sphere. Am I right? Is that what you're trying to, uh, trying yes. to convey to me? I, I, did that. I created that persona. OK, uh, I was a little kid. Everybody told me I was shy and blah, blah, blah. When I moved to Hawaii, I was like, nobody knows me. I could start from scratch. So I just went by Doc out the gate. Like that was my, you know, radio personality, my alter ego. Yo, how did that Doc come through? 
I, I was a paramedic in the army and in, oh, in, in music at the same time, right? So right. one of the nurses called me Dr. Rock and Roll, and I was like, it's hip hop, but I like the name. So it stuck Dr. Rock. And then also in the military, the person that's really gung ho, that will just do anything, try anything, afraid of nothing, like run into a fire, you to grab a Twinkie, that was me. That's called the Rock Soldier, right? Uh -huh. And so the nickname for all paramedics in the military is Doc. Right. So it stuck in every which way. Like it was a random thing an old lady said. And then the rest of the people that know how I acted, mm. you know, like medics aren't supposed to be sharpshooters. Yo, I go to the range, I'm gonna hit 40 out of 40. You know, medics aren't supposed to want to drive a tank. I wanted to drive tanks. You know, I wanted to jump out of planes. I wanted to, you know, go to ranger school. Like I wanted to do all of the crazy stuff that you're not supposed to do as a medic. Medic, you're supposed to be in a hospital, you know, wearing your white suit and just like giving people robitussin, right, ibuprofen. Right. Right, right. All the all the military people will get that robitussin, ibuprofen joke. <laughs> so don't want to use I, don't, don't want to use their their weapon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just I was, I was there. really, really, really just gung ho. So the name just stuck and. I got you. It's better than my original DJ name, which was Yoki. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, but you're talking about persona. So, you know, you're talking about crafting. As opposed to crafting a person, you just produce who you are. Is that what you're trying to say, Doc? Initially, as a kid, I produced who I was to get out of. Uh, honestly, now that I'm older, I know it was abusive. At the time, I didn't know it was abusive. Just the way that, you know, I let things go down on the block. The way I let people handle situations the way I let myself, you know, be guided and misdirected and, you know, things of that nature or always being told I wasn't good enough or all this other stuff. I just came out and say, oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to create an alpha personality and run it. Right. Right. But according prior to that, I didn't have one of those, you know, yeah. that wasn't me. That wasn't what I was taught, you know? Yeah. Um, and then once I created this alpha personality and everybody loved it, I kept running with it. Yeah. And then and now it's the, you. Those, all the ones that were close to me knew that I wasn't really that person, but I grew into it. Yeah. But I'm like, yo, I'm going to be an alpha personality, but respectful because I remember what it was like to be the disrespected one. So how is that translating to the online presence that you are currently really swinging home runs with right now? I, I was a beginner. Yeah. And when I was a beginner, the guys above me, they would look down upon you. They wouldn't try to help you. They would like, oh, you know, just uh, over here, go figure it out. You know, go look this up. Well, that's just how people were, right? They weren't trying to help it. And I was like, yo, I wasn't coming at you to take your spot. I was coming to make my own spot. But because, you know, I, I thought you was cool, but it turned out what you really was was afraid of the competition. So you was, you was cock blocking the move. You know, no. you was trying to stop the people from coming up by keeping the information to yourself instead of like sharing it. So I decided, yeah. yo, I'm going to tell it all. I'm going to give mm -hmm. you all the information and I'm cocky enough. I dare you to try to come at my space. <laughs> you see, see well, I, mean? I think I, so isn't there a move? I was able to go ahead. Finish your thought. I'm sorry. Huh? No, finish you your know, thought. You, you take that album personality, but like, I'm going to tell you how to do everything. I'm not going to hide any of it. I'm not hiding it behind like, oh, well, if you learn X, Y, Z and you want to know more, I'll pay me and I'll teach you That's the right. secrets. But I'm going to tell you the secrets up front. Because is what? Isn't there a, I, I feel like, I feel like recently, maybe not when you were getting into the game, but recently there is a movement on in YouTube that a lot of the personalities are now becoming more transparent, are now becoming more available and and uh, are providing information that they were before kind of letting you in only if you pay the piper. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to tell you what. When I haven't set my courses up yet, but when I set my courses up, the information will already exist outside. You can get it. If you can't afford it, you can get it. If you can't afford it, I'm going to take you. The advantage of taking one of my courses is you get me too. Right? I will give you the information. Like, I can tell you right now, I can tell you, my dad's, you know, kimchi recipe because he taught me, but I can't make it still. <laughs> you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It takes yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put in that work to get it to yeah, that yeah, level. Yeah. Like yeah. if when I try, my joint come out like too sweet or too vinegary or too fish right. saucy or something. Right. When my dad makes it, it'd be on point and I just shake my head. I'm like, yo, I followed the instructions to the letter, but for some reason it ain't, it ain't right. coming I out. 
I think he lied though. I, I I've been meaning to ask my brother. Let me check his paper versus my paper. See, he probably <laughs> gave us both two different joints so that we always got to call him. And be like, yo, pops, we need some more kimchi, you know. Um, but like like my dad used to joke, and my my brother and I too. Like we sold cameras, right? So all these people would come in and they'd be like, well, I need this camera, and I need this camera, and I need this camera. And we used to always try to tell them, I could give you, you know, pops hundred and fifty thousand dollars Cine Alta. And slap on an eighty thousand dollar Fujinon glass, and send you out there. And I could go out there with this eight hundred dollar digital eight. And at the end, when we compare footage, I will smoke you. It's not the camera, Joe. You need to go learn some certain, you know, filmic skills, right? You need to learn how to craft the story, tell the yeah. story, create emotion, add tension, like all of that mess, right? People still don't believe that to this day. You be on my streams, bro. You mod a lot of my streams. Oh, what kind of yeah. camera is that? Camera don't matter, bro. All right. Camera don't matter. My stream would still be entertaining if I only use this. Yeah. If that's not a cocky statement. That's a fact, bro. You know what I'm saying? Well, so we like, know, I, we know as we know as people that are that are trying to level up our stream quality, how that when we look at YouTube, sometimes the people that are like making waves are are still filming their nose. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're still the, the camera is still looking up their nose, and you're just wondering, dude, you're making so much, so much bag, and you still can't get a proper camera gear. What's going on? That's you and I when we look at them. But to the common people, all they hear is what the content is being given. No? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, okay, so you you're in an industry that generates a lot of charlatans, right? On two, on both industries, right? Photography and, you know, ministry. And look, there's cats out there on both sides of that game that should not own a camera and should not own a pulpit, but they are running mm. things, right? Yeah. That doesn't mean I want to beat them. I ain't even going to try to beat them. As a matter of fact, right. I tend to mm. ignore them, but they do exist because it goes to show you it's not necessarily the equipment or the lights or whatever, you know, like it, it's it, people don't buy product. Yo, people buy people, mm. you know, and, and, and they just don't like I did OBS and Wirecast forever. And it was, those tools were effective. They absolutely work. When I got to Ecamm, I was like, I'm in love. These cats are legit. They're like yeah. family. Like they yeah. try to take care of the people. They're There's very, giving, you know, and then, so I'm like, you know what? I can evangelize this. Because I think everybody has a chance to put their business out there. Like, you know what's going to be the end of my YouTube career? When my brother decides to do YouTube. Because <laughs> he's, he's younger than he's me. content, man. He's better. I'm cuter. He's better. <laughs> he's better. All the stuff that you guys like, hey, Doc, you got it. Yo, my brother, little brother taught me most of that. Him and my dad, you know? <laughs> this is like, your brother, they're right? both way back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put him on the screen, yo. It's June, welcome. Up, <laughs> we're we're going to send you the link to join us soon. No, no keep him away. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, so happy. I'm so happy that my brother don't want to be on YouTube because my career is over because he's way better than me. But you know what? I ain't afraid to say that. You know, I love that yeah. fool. So I, I'll tell I will push him. I'm like, bro, if you came on and just did what I did in the native tongue, you'll blow up. So, dude, so. Doc, you are in this in this like flux now because, you know, like like uh, our audience don't really know. Probably this is the first time they're they're seeing you uh, outside of your brother and a few of our friends here. Uh, but a lot of the people that are in my circle probably don't don't know you. Uh, but you're really swinging the hammer when it comes to knowledge and skills and uh, kind of like a very nerdy approach to what we're trying to do. And there's a lot of equipment, obviously, and you are. You are mastering a lot of those things just because you have the history for it. You've been Apple. Uh, you've done uh, live streaming before uh, before the pandemic really made us all live streamers, right? So yeah. now you're kind of taking it by the horn. And how are you now leveraging your knowledge and your skill to begin to produce some influences in in your circles and maybe maybe even your bank account? I'm, I'm figuring out. I'm figuring out my brand. Okay. I think that's what it is. I'm figuring out my brand. So, for instance, um, 
a lot of people got the gear stuff on point, right? And the gear will always be the gear. And all of this gear today is fitting the chains. Tomorrow, DJI yeah. is coming out with a new camera, right? I know because I've been creeping because I've been waiting. <coughs> and, uh, what's in my bag? I have my Osmo Pocket. I love it. But I was like, oh, it's missing all of these things. I, I got money that tomorrow morning they're going to drop Osmo Pocket 2, <laughs> you know? And then when they do that... Like, <laughs> Wait a minute. Aren't we on the no purchase agreement yeah. clause or something like that how you purchasing stuff and you're telling I'm me not, not to buy things no, i'm not i'm not trust me I'm, but <laughs> it's just it's going to come at me like oh you want this and i'm like nah because what i figured out what my brand is about to be um is not only my i'm going to teach you just the stuff because anybody can teach you the stuff right oh uh, i'm going to teach you how to add the mindset to that same stuff mm. and level it up so you know one of the cats in the ecam community will teach you about graphics I'm going to teach you the graphics, the same thing, but I'm going to give you the mindset to actually know you are not allowed to take this and go home and be like, oh, I learned how to do something on Keynote today with Doc. I'm going to need you to generate five, six pieces of that and then put it out there and just let it get ripped, right? I'm going to push you to go to the next level. I am not going to allow anybody in the Let's Get Live crew to just, this is good enough. This is good enough is a curse. And it was a pet peeve of, of mine. It was a pet peeve of my dad, a pet peeve of my brother. Our community here in Hawaii, they love good enough. And we will not let that fly. And it's probably, mm. my, dad, my, my dad probably nailed that into me. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I, I don't know where I get it from, but good enough is not enough, yo. It has to be. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Can you unpack um, that a little bit, Doc? Because a lot of people are trying to coast. You know, they're trying to say, oh, my personality will, will translate. Uh, and hopefully uh, I say some, you know, I make random thoughts and random concepts and it makes it, wow, people want to follow me. Nope. Don't work that way. Uh, when you in your neighborhood, when you're in your community, when you're in your church and it's you and three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred other people, maybe when you go online, eight point six capital B billion. Your charlatanism will be flat kicked out. And you don't even have to intentionally be that way. I'm not using that word like saying everyone's out here trying to cheat or whatever. No, but you can't do that out in, in the, the internet, right? The internet's too big for that. So you have to actually bring real deal value, right? Mm. So again, Good. like somebody asked the other day because all of the coaches if you listen to me you listen to rob andrew nick nimmin d nimmin like uh sean cannell everybody says hey the way you're going to get subs and keep subs is you got to bring value you got to bring value i was on diana stream the other day because i'm on her stream sometimes and somebody was kept asking like well how do i provide value how do i provide value yeah i'm like bruh if you don't know the answer to that without us telling you the answer you're yeah, already yeah. screwed mm. right like if this is good if if you go to work right and so okay there's 10 employees okay this happens on a daily basis and oh this this one chaps my nads i'm bringing you um, live into ecamm right now bro uh, <laughs> go ahead sir if you, if you go to work and there's 10 employees and every day all of the 10 employees show up at 8 a.m and then at 4 30 p.m when it's time to jet all 10 employees go leave at you know 4 30 p.m and then you're like man like we've been here long like how come we're not getting a promotion a blah 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 right and then june comes in he the new guy all right june shows up at 7 45 right he can't even get in the building but he in the parking lot right when the boss come to open the door june's like sup boss let's go you walk in First of all, he get first crack at donuts or bagels when they land on the conference table. But then when it's time to go, he the last one at the desk and the boss is like, yo, we got to lock up. He goes, yeah, yeah, let me finish this email. And he's like, no, son, I got to pick up my kid from school. He said, yeah, yeah, let me finish this email. And then, you know, 435, he finally clicks it, runs. Sorry, boss, I made you late. I had to get that last email out. Who getting the race? Even though he made him late for picking up the kid for soccer practice, who's getting the raise? The 745 dude, right? the 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 435 dude and then with the other nine or ten people fitting to say oh the new kid came in he tried to take my job 
and I, I'm going to just put this out there because my brother's Asian, so I can say it, hate me if you want, at docrock at gmail.com. Uh, they'd be like, oh, look, the Asian dude came in, and he over here trying to take our job, blah, blah, blah. No, nah, he put in the work. Yo, you want to be the go-to guy. You know why T.O. and A.I. and who's the latest one? Um, uh, Antonio Brown. You know why those fools can act the A on, on the field or the court? You know, you know why they can act the way they act and be on the news every day, but they still getting those big contracts? Because when it's time to ball, those they ball. dudes ball, right? Yeah. If you could suck or sitting at the end of the bench and you try to do that mess, you're fired. You're gone. You have yeah. got to be the go-to person, right? That's how you add value. You be the go-to guy. At this point in time, no cockiness whatsoever, just true facts. Go to Ecamm. I don't have to say, ask me, I got you. Other people are saying, yo, ask him. Yeah. He got you, right? I, I saw Matthew name popped up. Matthew just emailed me. I, yeah, I, right I, here. Got, my, I got my test for you, Matt. Like, I'm about to show you that it can be done. Big um, Matt. You know what I'm saying? You know, and oh, dude, his kid is freaking the most handsome little dude in the world. Must take out this moment because I seen Matt. Um, <laughs> he's oh, his he says his energy just you just want it's like a toy. You just want to pick him up and squeeze him. <laughs> Shoot his kid ever. I, I, I'll, I'll I'll link you later. But he said he sent a video and I was like, yo, that kid's going to be a rock star. So, so again, it's it's putting in work, right? Like you you. If you show up and you give yeah. people what they want, Jim Rohn yeah. said it, or Zig Ziglar said it, you could get whatever you want by giving mm -hmm. as many people whatever they want. Yeah. When I learned that from Zig, it never left my body, yo. That is one I hold to my heart every day. So I have no problem telling you guys everything I know. When I'm ready to hit the switch, some cats are just going to buy it because I sold it. Yeah. And the other cats are going to be there because they want to learn from me and not from my contemporaries. And there's nothing wrong with my contemporaries. They can do it their way. You know what I'm saying? I'm Burger King. I'm going to have it my way. So I, when you, when we're, we're, when, when I requested you to come uh, to the show, I was talking to you about leveraging and online presence and things of that nature. But what you're telling me right now and what you're unpacking here is there is no leverage. There's no leveraging online presence unless you provide value. Yep. Here's why. I can go to the, almost everybody in your stream right now, whoever is watching, every single one of them would love to have a million followers. Right? Yeah. Everybody. And in most cases, you get like a 2% return on that, but we won't get into that. Let's say I could give you a 20%. Oh, you know what? I'm generous as heck today. I'm going to give you a 50% return. Everything you post with a million followers got you a half a million actions, right? If I could do that for you tomorrow, magic wand, you know, hit the magic wand. If I could absolutely do that for you tomorrow, and then here, I was just trying to find my stuff. Here we go. <laughs> Are you ready? Do you Not have me. the content? So. Me neither. Yo, I'm Billy Bob Brubake the badass, and I still ain't ready. Like, if somebody gave me that tomorrow, I'm not ready. You know what I mean? And everyone's like, well, I need this, I need that. No, you don't, bro. When you are ready, your maker, your creator, your deity, you can insert whatever, you know what I mean? Whatever it is that, that you, quote, unquote, give your, your strength to, we'll give it to you when you're ready. You so know you're what I mean? But the the power is in you. It's not in yeah. me. If, no. if I, oh, you got a million followers now, Lynn was popping. You could be like, yo, but I can't do it today because my, my kids need me to do X, Y, Z. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You ain't ready. Your kids are always mm. going to need you to do X, Y, Z. You know what I'm saying? But just like you woke up that one day and then was like, man, yo, dad, I got it. Let's go. All if, the value, if, if value is the main thing, Doc, if value is the main thing, what would you say is the subsequent leveraging ability for you to be able to provide the value that you provide? What is the other thing that you need to bring to the table in order for you to be a personality that, that is able to leverage that personality? What would it be? Honestly, true altruism. Unpack that for us. I, I was, you know, you know me. I let stuff marinate. 
right? <laughs> I, after I say it, I got to shut up and let it marinate for a second. Yeah, True yeah. altruism. Hey, uh, giving someone a million dollars isn't altruistic, right? Okay. Because if you can afford that, it didn't really do nothing, right? If you only had a million and one dollars and you gave somebody a million dollars, that's altruism, right? If you got you're five giving bones, from where it hurts. Holla. If you got five bones and you give somebody four of them dollars, that's not altruism. You got to give them all four dollars and be like, yo, I can make me another four. That that level of hunger, that level mm. of I will be, I am not, like I said, I am not afraid to tell you every single thing I know. I'm not losing. What you're saying is I'm not losing anything by giving of myself. I do not mm. come from a loser mentality. I do not come from a loser mentality. I do not come from a loser mentality. I come from a winning standpoint, yo. I you're preaching, you, bro. Give you everything I own right now and I get it all back in the week. Because because the source is you. It's not oh. like you're trying to, you're not like trying to get it from a tree. The source is you. So if oh. you empty out, the source will continue to bring it back in. Holla, holla, holla. These are parables from years and years back, the golden egg thing, whatever, three feet from gold. Like all these parables exist, but all of a sudden, Kim Kardashian telling fools they need this right makeup to look a type. I'm like, come on, son. Like this stuff is thousands and thousands and thousands so of years saying old. Adding value, you're saying adding value and being about just providing from yourself and knowing that whatever you pour out is always going to be in and that you are not less because you gave more. Right. Am I right? You know, the, hard, the hardest part about that, there would be people that you absolutely love telling you you're doing it wrong. But if you really, really mm. love doing something whatever it is it could be sewing scrapbooking uh fishing like shooting pictures like whatever somebody 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 is going to tell you you're doing it wrong and you're going to have to look at that person and be like you know what i love you and i could be wrong but we will yeah. find out yeah like i'm not going to worry about what if we're going to find out it's not about what if i'm wrong we're going to find out so to your point we started at roughly the same day yeah. and you and i and a couple other people in the community every second we learn something new we go live like 10 minutes later all hair messed up late at night maca pia pia that's yeah, I, I remember you and i'm like one o'clock in the morning <laughs> what is this dude doing pia, out of the eye like looking like straight dirt and we're like yo Y'all need to know about this. Check this out. Me and Lim figured this out. You know, like that's true giving. I need to go to bed, son. I got, I got, I got work. You know, you're like, yo, I should not be up right now. Wifey fitting to kill me, but let's put this out real quick. So then we go online. We tell it next, you know, 50 people come to figure out like, Hey, look, here's a different way to do your timer joint. Right. Yeah. And then like, you know, a week later, Bradley's doing it. He's putting it, the stuff out and like everybody's on it. Right. Yeah. So he's teaching the keynote way. I was like, okay, he got that lick. Let's work on this other thing. So we started doing that. And then we just keep elevated, elevated, elevated. Right. Like a month later, I got asked to uh, do a video for like Restream mm. because they saw all of the random videos that we were posting like yeah. every day in Ecamm with just us goofing. Like, it wasn't even a whole month. I think it was like two weeks later, right? Yeah, yeah. Stream comes in and be like, yo, we want you to do this video, blah, blah, blah. Here's your purse. And here's like, you know, six months to, to figure the software out, learn what you need to learn. Yo, you know how I am. Two weeks, two, not even, two, I'm sorry, like a week later, the video that they wanted was up. It's like, damn, this fool is quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, same with Mars, right? Mars did his little video about Lutz and everybody's like, yo, I love the style. I love your training, whatever. Boom. He just put it out there for free. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he gets the phone call. Hey, yo, we need you to make this, 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 and this. Boom. There goes the bag, you know? And then, you know, here so, we are. So, so like, six, the leverage was not, the leverage was not notoriety or money. The, the Really, we were just sharing, you were just sharing a value point that comes from Holla. yourself. And because Holla. of that, Holla. things right. came when your we way. Cam community, son, there was 1,500 people in the group. We teetering on 15,000. Yeah. But yeah. now we are known as 
the the NFL cats in the ECAM joint, right? Yeah. When we started, we was pop Warner helmet sideways, looking out the ear hole, going, I got mom, look at me, running down the thing. But yeah. now people consider us, you know, the Derek Cars. I'm a Raiders fan. Deal with it, son. You know, they, they I consider like the, us. I'm okay. I'm okay with the Raiders. I'm not okay with the Sox fan, though. That that That's a different story, though. I got to go. I'm even, I'm even okay with the Royals. <laughs> I got to go. This is different. It's not baseball. But you know what I mean? We didn't come out there and be like, yo, look at me, look at me. Here's my stuff for sale. Look at me, blah, blah, blah. We wasn't, neither one of us was like that. You know, Bradley's not like that. Marsh is not no. like that. All these big cats. And again, I started in April at the same exact spot. Everybody else started, but yet I'm moderating their joint because I gave the time and effort to try to help people out. So right? this is not thinking about, like, you, I think you mentioned it earlier and from the video that we watched earlier today on a separate separate times, like like you said, that it's about it's about what I'm putting in, not necessarily what I'm going to bring out. There's a lot of people that are coming into the online space thinking, what can I milk from YouTube? What can I milk from this group? What can I milk from from this software? What can I milk from there? Can I milk and can I milk it? Can I milk it? But rather to come and say, can I take care of this cow? You know, can I feed this cow? What can I do to make this cow healthy? You know what I'm saying? And then the cow provides the milk. Right? Am I am I am I on top? You're on point a hundred percent into your exact analogy. This is the point. I literally just watched this video maybe like three, four days ago, and they were talking about Australian Wagyu. First of all, that cracks me up as a Japanese major. Wagyu means Japanese beef. It only can be made in Japan, period. <laughs> it's like champagne. Outside of champagne is sparkling wine. So, but that's a different argument. We won't get into that. And the guy was talking about how they could raise, you know, Wagyu level cattle faster because the Japanese method is you get up, you sing to the cow, you give it, you know, really, really good food, hand selected food, right? You massage it, you brush it, you sing to it, you play music to it, you go out there, you know, you do your prayers, you walk it around in the space this size in my room, right? This, let's call it a 10 by 10. In the U.S., there's about 12 cows in a 10 by 10. You know how big a cow is? In That's Japan, massive. in a space this size, there's two cows on the busy farms, one cow on the high-level joints. One. He got all of the space. So cow would be like, man, this life I'm chilling, son. You know how you mm -hmm. see the cartoon when he got the grass in the mouth? The, you know, guy's always eating the one piece of grass. There's some good yeah, stuff, cow, Doc. They're living it, right? So when you see a piece of A5 Wagyu, and you see that lovely marbling and that good, good. And when you taste that joint and it just melts on your tongue, you understand why that's a $300 steak. That exact same animal treated the way we treat it, beating it to death, trying to get that output so we can send it where we send it. It don't even taste like the joints at Costco. Costco is pretty good, but it's not even close. Uh, it's like that rubber high school steak they used to give you once in the blue moon in high school because, you know, the steak has some money. Yeah, it's it's because of the input, right? The output. We trying to figure out how much steak we can get to the market so that we can get rich. They figuring out how can I represent my family's name? How can I represent my family's name? This cattle. My grandfather started this business five generations ago. I want when somebody to eat this to look at, you know, Miyazaki and say, oh, the Miyazaki beef is legendary. Right. He might be the last male. He might be the end of that lineage. But that dude is going back all them generations. I need every person in my family to, to be respected when somebody eat my steak. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I learned that because I went to school in Japan. But that's just a different level of pride you put into your stuff, right? Well, let me ask you a question, Doc. Did you have a issue kind of like, did you have a moment where you were kind of kind of like a vying there's an internal struggle between what can i get out of this or what what can i put in was there ever a time where you struggled with you know what i'm not going to pour in my time and my talent on things that are not going to return any valuable asset to me it was there ever a time where you were kind of like fighting that like i i've i've done that where i'm like you know i poured in a few hours on this 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 thing i i don't want to just give it away you know uh I, I need somebody to to reciprocate before I give it away. Was was there a point where you struggled between 
the input and the output between between giving value as opposed to trying to take from what you are trying to put into if you know what, if you know what i mean yeah yeah i feel you um i could be lying but i'm going to go ahead and say no and here's the reason why i'm not that type of personality I'm not giving you a gift because I expect you to give me a gift back. I'm giving you a gift because I just, that dude, I want to give you a gift. I'm Tinkerbell. Yo, I'm cracking up laughing when you laugh. You know, it, it, yo, me giving you something that, that works out for you cures me. So that's my gift already. Like the monetary side of it, I don't sweat. But then again, I'm cocky enough to go eventually somebody will come with the bag and be like, yo, I got you, son. Like, I see what you're doing. I see you out here. I got you. And I do think people be like that, right? I do think that there's, I, I, I have this weird thing. I think there's people that actually got the bag. They're sitting around watching all these people on the come up doing their thing. And then they're going to be like, all right, he ready. And they just going to come and drop the bag in front of your face and be like, let's get it. But if you was busy out there reaching for the bag, then they thinking, oh, that dude is just in it for the money. I don't respect yeah. that kind. We as consumers do not respect people who are about the money. As an Apple person, I got to defend the company all the time because I'm like, that's not Apple's thing. You've been told by that by other people. You've been told like that by haters. You've been told that by the media. But that is not what Apple's mentality is not about the money. They didn't just upgrade the phone so that you got to buy a new one. That, you know, they just doing that because they just trying to make money. First of all, every business, if you're not trying to make money a little bit, you fail. That's a different story. Right. But it's, I mean, just like, I just need, 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 need kind of money. Like grab, 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 like the phone companies or the cable companies. You know what I mean? Apple is not the phone companies or the cable companies. I really don't think Samsung is that way either. I don't think most of the large major brands are Nikes and all of them. I don't think there's philosophy because if there was that philosophy, they wouldn't last. The only reason why the phone companies and the cable companies get away with it is we need it. The minute somebody come up with something better, they're gone. And they're like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, remember when they used to sell us our phones and jack us for two years, talking about you're paying down the phone, but yet if you kept your phone longer than two years, did your bill go down after you already paid for the phone? Because their excuse was, you know, your bill's 100 bucks a month because 50 goes to the phone, the other 50 is for service. Okay, 24 months later, the phone is completely paid for. As a matter of fact, it's about $2,400 worth of phone at that point instead of 1200 right? But did you come and say, okay, your thing's paid. Let's drop your bill. Never happened, right? Up until Spectrum came into the game and T-Mobile on the other side, uh, when they take the internet speed and bump it from 100 megabits per second to 200 for the new customers, so I can get more money. So they go to the old customers and be like, hey, we're going to move you up to the 202 because you've been with us for 15 years. No, nah, they keep it quiet because they don't even want you to know. So you sitting there with the same old internet speed you had for five years, even though they give it everybody else, they giving their new girlfriend all of the good loving, but they didn't give you nothing unless you call them and say, Hey, yo, shouldn't I be getting this? Oh yeah, we got you. We switch it. Oh, aren't you, don't you enjoy your service with us? Look, we switched you to the fastest speed for free. No nah, fool. You just gave the new people the same thing. That's the difference between grabby grabby. And I'm going to just keep putting out that good, good, knowing that eventually I'm going to get my return. Hmm. Reminds me of the, because this is LJA ministry. So I have to throw in what, what a uh, scripture that reminds me of what you just said. The Bible tells us that if we throw the bread in the water, it shall return to us many days, many days hence. You know what I mean? So you're talking about bringing back what you pour out. Uh, so I have a question about that. And the question is this, Doc. Is there is there a demarcation line between the business aspect and your benevolence aspect? Or do you just kind of give and give and give without expectation of return? Uh, or is there just the return is just expected to come if you continue giving? Or do you say, you know what, if I don't get a return, uh, then I'm going to have to start giving. I'm going to start charging. Is there no. a demarcation? I, probably to my detriment. No, it's just not me. I, I wasn't, I'm not that dude. Like I was raised a giver. So I'm fit to give like it is what it is. And there's many of people that told me you need to stop giving it away. You got to blah, blah, blah. I'm saying, hey, I love you. I respect your opinion. That doesn't suit me. Yo, I don't feel good like that. Yo, I'm always been a giver. Always been a provider. I've been a caregiver, you know, like, yo, I came from 
being in, uh, let me put it this way. My my teenage years, when I should have been partying like a rock star or whatever, I was the fit in the country so that people that look like me could have a better life. You know, I was putting myself in the middle of bullets so I could wrap you back up, stop you from bleeding so I can get you home safely to your family. Mm, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for service. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wasn't like on the block talking about checking my rims, looking at my stereo, son. I was running around with, you know, a bag full of Band-Aids and a weapon talking mm -hmm. about, yo, we got to defend the country that other people are screwing up for us. But, hey, that's a different subject. But you know what I'm saying? Like, you, we don't – and we don't give for y'all to be like, thank you for your service. Like, I didn't sign up to the Army for y'all to be like, thank you for the service. I signed up for the Army because that's what a man supposed to do. I wish we were like Korea. I'm adopted by Korean family, so I say a lot of Korean things deal with it. Um. I wish that we had to guarantee every swing in Johnson in the entire country had to do military service, even if it's only a year or two, you know, just so you can understand what giving yourself to the greater community looks like. That's mm. our number one problem with our entire country as it stands. And it plays out in our society is we are selfish, straight selfish. I had the opportunity to live in places that aren't that way. And I learned it and I did it at a young enough age that I could course correct. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My time in Korea, my time in Japan, where there's a little bit less selfishness, taught me what it looks like to be not selfish. And what's crazy about that is trying to be us, they are both starting to go towards selfish. But they're going to hopefully they catch themselves ahead of the game and realize, no, nah, we don't want to do that. We got our own identity without it. It's interesting because as I think about it, I remember telling people back back uh, a while back that, you know, here's Facebook, for instance, not charging us anything. And, you know, for, for a long time, they didn't even have any type of ad space, right? They just had us talking to each other and, and talking about that. And when they did provide ad space, it was on the sides. You know, I think one of the demise of... Uh, of what is that MySpace was that ads started coming in and it was no longer free so to speak you had to deal with all these ads that were coming in somebody was trying to milk the system um and i think the more we realize that we are being milked the more resistant we are to the product that's being provided to us right and i think there's victim thinking though uh, sorry i love you deal with it here comes no the fight. go for it that's victim thinking Every, we we got we're, we're backwards, bro. I don't want people advertising to me. I don't want people. To, I, well, how do you know the kicks you got on right now? Yeah. How do you know the whip you got right now? How do you know that this not really Aquafina, this uh matcha that I got in here? Like, how did I know this brand of matcha was that high level good matcha that I didn't stick in a plastic bottle and ruin it? Up um, you got somebody sold it to you somewhere. That shirt you got on, the lights you got that. Econ, like all of that got sold to you, but don't people were sick and they don't want it. They don't want no advertising. They don't. They don't. It's Nikon, Nikon, Nikon. Nikon. Yes, yes, Nikon. yes. I know. I was just doing that because I know it bothers you. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> they. Everyone says that, but what you really want to say, just like you know, I used to you know tease my friends at the club. That, why did dudes always bother me? Yo, if that dude was fly, handsome, rich, you would have that reaction. You're having that reaction because you want X, Y type one to come up to you and be like, hey, girl, what your name is, right? But when the one that doesn't fit your expectation comes up and be like, hey, girl, what your name is, you're like, get away from me. I don't like him. Hey, listen, you have got to take it all to get the ones that you want. You have the ability to be selective. So when there's an ad that you don't like comes up, you just ignore it. Do not yeah. become the victim to it. Yeah. We need that. If it wasn't for those advertisements, this service doesn't exist. And while everybody's complaining about it and what it's doing to us and all this other stuff, they're using it to their benefit, right? So again, Warren Buffett, everybody running left, those of us that ran right. Everybody's saying get off of social media, we dove deeper into social media, right? When everybody was saying YouTube's ruining blah, 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 because all kids do is stare at their phone, we dig deeper into YouTube, right? And then we're not talking to kids. We're talking to our contemporaries. But the our, our new customer base, everybody's here. So while these people are being afraid of that technology from the gate that I've been in tech, people have always tried to badmouth tech. 
But you know what? They said the same thing about books. They said the same thing about magazines and TV and Xbox, all of that. You know what I mean? I had a friend years, years ago, her son, like, oh, my God, he's always into the games. He's always into the games. I wish he would stop, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, how about you just get him a programming book and base it? What? Isn't video games bad? But, you know, hey, that dude is probably pulling in like half a million a year in salary working in the game company in his mid-20s right now. You think his mama wish she listened to the girlfriends telling her that video games are bad for kids? Or that she listened to Uncle Doc tell her, teach the kid how to program and put him to work, show him where it's really at, because he is passionate about this. You're crushing his passion. Which one you think she wish she had to listen to at this point? <laughs> Uncle Doc. Yo, know, there's victim mentality, and I do not allow it. I'm sorry. I will cuss every single person out that comes into me with that victim mentality stuff. You are not a victim. Stop being that. It's That's not right. it. You got to get in where you fit in. Like you are being tested because you need that test. So I got, um, I got two things right right now from our our discussion. And to leverage your online presence really first is create value and provide value, right? Provide from yourself because you are uh, an ever flowing, an ever flowing and, and constantly producing um, person inside of you. You never run out of value that you have because no. like you said about your dad, just because somebody knows what you know, doesn't mean they'll produce what you know. Woo -wee. True. Right. And so the value that provide the knowledge that you have does not equate uh, to the product that you are able to produce or the or the person that you produce. And the second thing is to be uber benevolent or as you you call it, uh, what is the word that you just you uh, used? Yes. It was as a T word uh, altruistic. Uh, yes. Right. So you said to be altruistic. I mm. like my I like my uh, I like my teaching in threes. Do you have another one for us? Yes, I do. <laughs> you know, that, you know, seriously, at the end of the day, that is straight good. What you said, something about that system of threes. Like, you got you got to have a certain amount of system, right? You got to have, you know, save yourself. System. Yes, you save yourself time, energy, and money. Got to have a system. Save yourself time, energy, and money. My God. Always got system because you know as we were talking to one of our contemporaries today and we were beating him up because he he's, he's sick with it right he's super sick with it but he's not making himself in a position where he can grow and the only way that he can become more valuable to the community that he's fostering is he got to release time for himself the only way that you can be uh, you know what it is uh, um you mentioned something about you know like the online presence I think what you would know about me, my online presence and my offline presence is the presence. It's the same That's one. Right. It's the same one. Right? I'm not, I'm not, although I have a moniker, I've learned to bring my moniker back into my actual me and not the alpha I was portraying. Uh, unpack that, that a little really bit. That unpack alpha. that a little bit about your moniker. Unpack that a little bit because I may not understand what you're trying I, to say. I, so. I, I took the moniker or the nickname Doc Rock as a way to hide from all of the things that everybody else said about me. When I moved to a new environment, I had a chance to reinvent myself. Like mm -hmm. Madonna, you think about it, she talks about it all the time. She reinvented herself about three times, you know, until she became Mads, who's the one that we all love and adore. But if you watch her early career, she reinvented herself about three times. Um, I, I use that to overcome the mental pain that I went through from being a, a, a person that was constantly told at the time and space we were in somewhat to this same day, not good enough, not black enough, you know, mm -hmm. not light enough, not dark enough, not smart yes. enough, not mm -hmm. fat enough, not fast enough. I, I took all of that stuff as, you know, I'm going to vent this dude. You go, I live in Hawaii now. Hawaii is for the most part, not very racial. It's very racial, but then not, it's more ethnic. It's kind of different. That's a different conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, yo, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just be that dude and I'm gonna own that dude. Nobody has to know inside the pain that I deal with. Well, I grew into that person and I took all of his learnings, his teaching and his self-awareness and all of that. And I it actually became me. So now, although it is a nickname, Facebook forced me to do it. They forced me to put my real name on the outside, but I am now one and the same. I'm no longer two different people. I used to go to the stage 
and re and rock it for 10,000 people and they go home and cry basically because my internal struggle was still jacked as yeah. I got more adult and understood that it's okay to need help and okay to you know mm. uh, therapize and seek assistance and whatever like yeah. now I'm one I'm just one person so my online people and my outline people is the same people you know there's not a yeah. difference and and you know I I know people would make fun of us now, but a few years ago, people would have been like, look at that, you're so tight with your computer friends. It's not my computer friends. Bro, if you was here, first of all, you look like you live in Hawaii. You're Filipino, so you're at least 36% anyway. That's <laughs> so, right. I'm there already. I'm Pacific you're, Islander you're, anyway. You know, like, if you was here, yo, we would be right across the street at Bevy right now having some food and cracking up laughing, you know? drinking whatever just enjoying ourselves if you were here i would be the way i'm with you now on our on our yeah. mastermind chat you yeah. or e or or marquette marshall any of them cats i would be like that and a lot of people they think that oh those are your friends on social media those are fake and i'm like it doesn't have to be you, that's up to you son like i desperately miss MacWorld when i used to get me and my mac nerds we get to meet once a year and just we we would eat dinner breakfast every day like we would just hang out like that that, that week we would just yeah. absorb as much time with each other as we can because we were legitimately friends and cats i met at MacWorld. we're in the same podcast 12 years later we're still creating the exact same podcast yo because we're real friends and i get really pissed off when people say oh that's your internet friends <laughs> right <laughs> my brother's right. dude yo you would be part of our clique you probably more like my brother because <laughs> he might like that that image quality from the Nikon. That's all about the right. technical. <laughs> you know what I mean? You guys might you guys would get along 100 percent like same way. And so that's why you know June, we gotta like, bring you back, bro. <laughs> we gotta bring back Doc and you at the same time. Yo, I'm definitely not taking him to the East Coast with me because he'll never come home. He went he <laughs> ran away once and our parents cried him back home, and I was like, "Thank you." I'll get my butt whipped. <laughs> See, even my brother, he could have stayed in the Bay. If my brother stayed in the Bay, dude, he's one of the sickest 3D designers. When 3D was brand new and you couldn't do it on your computer, my brother was killing 3D space. He should have been at Pixar with Steve Jobs. It's Crazy man, because back, back, I think 1998, I, we had that Mac. You know, like what is that? The, I don't even the think power. they had they had Final Cut Pro back then. I was. Not Final Cut Pro. They had like some type of software that it was still in that tiny, tiny like gray and 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 pixelated screen. And I was making designs back in the day, 1998, 90, 97, all of that. And and man, it's it's about it's about uh, we we may be we may, may may have missed it back then, but we're we're back here now. And I I like I like your three points. Can can you once again just kind of explore with me? I, we we're, we're we're about almost done with this show. Can you again just state the three things that we mentioned okay. today no. that that Go can uh, <laughs> that <laughs> he said Eonika. <laughs> but can you can okay. you? Right. I'm, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you the platform right now. Those three things, if you can encapsulate in a statement or maybe a, not in a phrase, but just kind of like your closing thoughts about those three things. Because I think talking about leveraging online presence, I think you gave people, I mean, money today. All right. So the, this one's a really old school one, right? But I'm going to make it easy for you. It's called Gigo, right? You, you remember Gigo? How's your, how's your old school computer technology go? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Gigo meant garbage in, garbage out. Right, you're not getting the output without the input. You got to put the good input. You know what I'm saying? Like that masterful, clean code. Right, that I'm putting in this work. I'm getting up every day when I'm up. Like, am I studying this craft that I say I want to get rich at? You know, you know. They remember the Tiger Joint? Oh, he hit like a thousand balls at the range every day. Yeah, Most people think that's crazy, but he out there hitting it. Right. And the other one would be that system. You got to have a system. Right. Figure yourself out, make it easy for you, save yourself time, energy, and money. And that last one is don't be afraid to give, yo. If you give value, you will get it back. In order to get whatever you want, you got to give as many people in whatever they want, right? 
The reason why Apple is worth three hundred billion dollars today, right now, or Jeff Bezos, whatever, is because they figured out a way to give the people what they want. People wanted to be able to buy everything that they wanted to buy without having to go to the store because their lives became busy. And so now you can go on Amazon and you can literally buy a motorcycle without ever leaving your crib. And so the people are like, well, how come Jeff Bezos so rich? Because he gave everybody what they wanted: easy shopping. It's so simple. Give the people what they want. Give the people what they want. I'm to let, let me let me bring back our 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 sound effect here because we're closing. Doc, it has been amazing chatting with you, and I hope our audience, my audience, as well as those that came uh, to to support you, have gained That's something. <laughs> <laughs> something valuable uh, from our conversation tonight. I know I didn't expect, I didn't expect the three things you, you mentioned. Certainly I did not expect uh, altruism as one of those, one of the things that you actually use to be able to provide presence and that you can leverage outside. I think I even consider that maybe my title for this show may have been a little less altruistic because I was trying to get something out of it instead of something to bring in it. But in the process of trying to do that, we did bring something to everybody's minds and hopefully into everybody's heart. And altruism, uh, value, systems, these are all these are all incredible things that we all benefit from every single day and people provide for us and we don't know it but the people that we are we are using as vendors the amazons the apples the youtubes and all those people are in that space am i right doc yeah and people don't want to admit it because they feel like oh they're big or they're rich or they're... no and of course they got to make money they got to pay employees they got to do this other stuff but yo they're giving stuff every day you just may not hear about it because everybody wants you to feel like they're doing something bad because they're mad that they didn't do it that's where it comes from. Half the, the smack talk normally comes from the other person really wishes they could be that. Right? You know what mm. they say? When you there's three pointing back at you. All of the guys, you know who complained the most about Amazon? Walmart. What is Walmart doing right now? Trying to make Amazon again. All right. But in the beginning, that's all they did was complain about it. Now they're trying to be that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's funny is what it is. But, yo, Everything, all, all of the companies that you know and love, if you really look at it, for the most part, they're out here giving back to you. Yeah. You know, there's a couple industries, they just don't think like that, like the medical industry, not the medical, but the uh, pharma and stuff like that. A lot of those are like mad crooked, but if you look at, go just look up Apple Charities and see what they give away every year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Go look at what Jeff Bezos gives away every year. And as much as you want to hate on him, the dude actually out here giving this stuff away. His wife, when all of that money in divorce, his ex-wife now, you know, she gave almost 75% of it away already. Wow. That's incredible. That's crazy. That's crazy. Incredible. She's like, I didn't need money. Because everyone's like, oh, she just broke it. She goes, okay, prove it. Here you go. Bam. Free computers for these kids. Free wow. college for these kids. She just started giving it away. She wow. gave almost every stitch of it away. Hmm. Look that stuff up, make yourself feel better instead of looking at how somebody trying to make more money because they came out with an iPhone 12 Pro Max and they cost this much when it should have cost this much according to some person who ain't making phones. How do you know how much it should have cost if you don't make phones? Shut up. Mm -hmm. Woo! Well, Doc, thank you again for joining joining me tonight. I really, I really am appreciative of your time, your talent, and... Uh, the, the opportunity to be able to chat with you even to meet June uh, digitally here uh, one of these days we'll, we'll be how funny that is there's a there's a um, you know how every place you go they'll take a, a national dish and they'll spin it and make it whatever it is locally because it's easier for the local people to get it than the real dish yeah, a Jun yeah. in, in Korean is like a flat kind of pancake type thing normally okay. it's fish and in it in Hawaii yeah leftover teriyaki beef and covered it in jun batter and it's literally called meat jun and so that becomes my brother's default nickname when people want to make trouble for me meat jun <laughs> 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 Woo! 
Well, everybody, thank you all for just hanging out with uh, Sean and I, the, the good doctor, as I would call him all the time, uh, the big brother over here in the social space. I truly appreciate his time with us. And listen, guys, I know we came in here, at least even for me, with the mindset of how can I learn or what can he do to to share with me some things that I can leverage my personal social uh, social um, interactions with people in the in the online space how can i leverage it to to bring me all these these things that maybe i'm seeking for and sean doc boyd just flipped the script on us and said stop thinking about leveraging people or leveraging your presence so that you can receive leverage your presence by providing value <laughs> wow that's incredible uh, i really hope that you pick that up today because that's what i picked up i'm about to give away stuff right now i'm about to enter into my creative mode just so that people can see hey i got something to provide for you and if sean's right and i think he is the stuff that you put out because it's biblical right if you put it out in the water it'll return back to you not many days hence so god bless you thank you for joining again doc love you brother and i'll thank talk you, to you guys soon until next time this is lemuel signing off